Hey folks, this is going to be another Unity AR tutorial where we look at animating our content to arrive so that it appears when we're running our AR application. So we're going to start with the previous tutorial where we had just a image marker and an astronaut 3D model, and we're going to start from there. So I've already done this to show you the example but I'm going to go ahead and tear these things out for now and I'm going to save this with a new name so I can get started and give you the tutorial. So let's see. Animate tutorial and here we go. Okay, so first I want to start by re-importing my astronaut. You've already done this, but I'm going to go through some steps again just to make sure everyone's up to speed and caught up. Previously, we'd found that 32 was a great scale for our astronaut and putting it at zero, zero, zero was really fabulous. We needed to also give it a texture and we also liked rotating it 180 degrees so that it was looking at us when we were looking directly at the image. All right, that's looking pretty good. We should do a quick test and make sure that this is working. I believe that I have this to play maximized. I'm gonna change that to play focused just so that it's a smaller view and we can still th see the things that are happening around it. Okay, there's my marker. And I forgot one key point. Always a good example to make a mistake so that you don't make the same mistake. We have to make sure that we put our astronaut as a child to our image target. That way, when the image target is being moved around, the astronaut follows it. There we go. Now we're all set. Okay, so how do we get this to animate? Well, if you want to do what I had in our initial video, um, have it scale up, we select the astronaut and we want to create an animation. So the first thing that we're going to do is with our astronaut selected, we're going to go up to window and we are going to say animation and animation. That's going to open up another window. For me, it's on another monitor. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that over here so you can see it. And making sure I have my astronaut selected, which I know I already said, I'm going to say create. That's going to go ahead and create a new animation. I'm going to save this in my asset folder in animation. If you don't already have an animation folder, it's often a good idea to right click in your assets folder and create your new folder right here. And I already have my animation folder. So I might create something like animation two, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip that because I already have mine. So hopefully you have yours now too and you can say create and you can save in that animation folder. I already have some animations in there from my tutorial prep, but so I'm gonna call this a for astronaut, and I'm gonna call this a scale. You can see that I have one also for landing. So once I have a scale set up, I'm gonna to need to create the actual animation. So for those of you who are already familiar with this, you know about keyframes, but for those of us who haven't animated before, I'm gonna be creating things called keyframes. And a keyframe is a point where I give the computer data about the settings and then the computer interpolates between those two settings. So I wanna make sure that my astronaut is still selected. I'm gonna say add property and I'm gonna add it to the transform node, which is the astronaut's transform node. Transform nodes are position, rotation, and scale. We can do all of these or just some of them. And in this case, I'm just gonna do scale. I'm going to hit that arrow to the left of astronaut and you can see that its scale is what I've currently set of 32. Now if I want this to scale up over the default that it's given me, that goes from 0 to 1 second and I can set the value at either of these points or I can create a new keyframe in the middle. In this case I'm going to set the keyframe at 0 to be 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, so it's super small. Now, if I drag this over, you can see that the keyframe 
at the end of the animation is still 32. So it's going to scale up from the new size of being too small, and it's going to scale all the way up to the right size. Now, if I go ahead and just close this and I press play, in some ways this is going to work, in some ways this is not going to work, and we'll see as soon as it's running. There we go. Okay, so I have an animation and it's looped and it's just scaling up, scaling up, and it doesn't actually care whether or not the marker is there, it's just constantly running. So there's a few problems there that we need to resolve. The first of which, if I go into my animation folder, I have something now called a scale and you're gonna have something called astronaut. I now have something called astronaut one because I already had an animation called astronaut from my previous tutorial. Um, if I select a scale, I can turn off loop time. And so what's now gonna happen is it will scale up and it will stop. So we've fixed some of our problems, but I'll show you another problem that happens. Okay, fantastic. That's, that seems like it's what I wanted. It scales up. But the problem is it doesn't rescale every time I place the marker down. So for instance, if I start the application and I'm not looking at the marker, which usually your user is not gonna be looking at the marker, the animation is actually already running right now. So that when I find the marker, the astronaut has already scaled up. So this is not gonna work for us, but it's a good step to getting to where we wanna be. So what we're really going to need to do is set it up so that the animation only starts once the marker is found. And to do that is a tiny bit more complicated, but that's the point of this video. Okay, so what I am now gonna do is I am going to open up this animator. And when I double click that, I'm gonna see a new window called animator that shows up here. And you might be in layers or you might be in parameters, um, but you should see these colored boxes over here. And I can scale out and scale in, and I can use my middle mouse button to, to pan around. Okay, so right now when I enter, I'm playing the animation of astronaut scale. So what I really wanna do is I want to change what happens on entry and have my A scale animation only happen after I tell it to happen. So step one, I am going to right click and I'm going to create a new empty state. That empty state would be handy if it was called empty. So I'm gonna rename it empty in the inspector. And I'm then gonna right click on, actually no, I'm gonna right click on empty and say set as a layer default state. So that means that whenever we enter, it is going to send us to this empty animation, meaning the astronaut is not going to be animated. The next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we need to create a trigger to tell it when to play our astronaut scale animation. So to do that, we wanna to go to parameters up here at the top and we hit our plus or our, our pull down to say trigger. And I'm going to say the name of this trigger is a trigger for astronaut trigger. So when we, this will be set up so that when we see the image of the astronaut, it will fire this trigger. Now that we have a trigger, we can create a transition. And so I'm going to right click on any state and say make transition. And that's gonna then let me point at an animation. So I'm gonna point at a scale. And if I select the line in between, I can set the parameters for why that transition happens. And so the condition is going to be our trigger over here. So I'm gonna add this A trigger. So when A trigger is on, it's going to send our astronaut model to play the A scale animation. Okay, that seems like everything is fully functional. If I go back to my scene and look at it, I can do a test right now. There's nothing that is going to fire that trigger, so I'm not gonna be able to get my animation to show up. But if I test it, I shouldn't see the scale animation. That's gonna be my sort of test. There we go. 
it's not scaling. And then to be sure, I can change my tab to the animator and I can see that it's currently on empty. There's nothing playing. Later, I'll be able to actually see that things are playing. And so this is why I like to, let's hit stop. This is why I like to make sure that my game view is set to focused instead of maximized so that I can easily change between these tabs and see what's happening. Okay, so our next step is that we're going to need to create a script and the script is going to be C++ and it's going to be telling our animations when to play. Don't get scared if you aren't in the scripting. This is really, really simple and it can be a little bit muddy. The main reason I'm making this video is that Vuforia has changed their scripting a, a ton. Actually, did I say it was C++? This, it's actually C Sharp. Um, Vuforia has changed their scripting a lot in the past four to five years, and it's very confusing if you're trying to figure out this on your own. So I've right-clicked in my animation folder and I've said create C Sharp script. It's gonna create something called new behavior, and I'm going to type in a name for my new behavior, and I'm gonna call it A for astronaut, A image, check. So it's gonna be my astronaut image check. Now, it's gonna do some reloading. I'm running this on a PC, so if you have problems with this next step on a Mac, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get you some solutions. But for me, normally I can just double click on my script and it's gonna open in Visual Studio. If you're having problems where it's not opening or if you've, you know, with all of these different versions of Unity that people are running, sometimes this ends up being a problem. You can go under Edit, Preferences, look at the external tools and make sure that your external script editor is something that you actually have installed. For me, I've had many versions of Unity. This used to be 2017, and when I upgraded to 2019, it actually broke my Unity's ability to connect, and I had to go in this menu and just simply select Microsoft Visual Studio 2019. Once that's working for you, we can bring that window over here to look at. And this is where we're gonna be running our, our scripts. You can see I actually have some of my, um, my other scripts still open in the background. Okay, so the thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a few lines of code to make this work for us. So AI image check, we wanna make sure that the public class is the same as the title of our file. That's gonna make sure that this runs. If you change the name of the script later in your project settings, you're gonna to need to update that there. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to write is private animator m animator. And essentially this is just allowing the script to identify what we're trying to connect to. Um, the next thing then we're gonna do is on start, we want M animator to be equal to get component animator. Okay, so this is essentially saying when we start, we're going to take the animator component of the thing that we're attached to and identify it as something that I can target later. The next thing we're gonna do is on void update we are going to ask it to let us do something. So in this case, I am gonna write a tiny bit more, but I'm gonna say if there is an M animator, essentially saying if there is animation code on the thing I'm attached to, then do something. And, and if not, you're gonna do nothing. And so if there is an animator code here, I want you to if input get key down and this is really just for testing key code point capital O and I'm then going to add another bracket hit a return 
put in another return, and I'm going to say m animator set trigger. And then in parentheses, you want to write the name of the trigger. And so the name of the trigger that I had there was under my animation tab. It was a trigger. So I'm going to say here a trigger. Then I want to have a semicolon at the end. OK, so again, this is saying I'm identifying a new variable or a new object, and I'm specifying what that object is going to be, and it's the animator from Unity. And if animator happens to exist, when I hit the O button or key on my keyboard, it's going to fire this trigger. OK, let's make sure that we are saying save or save all. Let's move this out of the way. When I click back in here, it will load back up. Looks like I've got an error. Where's my error? Do I have the incorrect number of parentheses? I have the incorrect number of parentheses. There we go. I needed to close out this if statement and I wasn't. File, save all. Now when I come back in, okay, I've got some inconsistent uh, line, line endings. Um, it hasn't bothered me yet. And to be completely honest, I am not a uh, C, I'm not fluent in C sharp. So I'm going to leave that be. And if we figure out a solution for that, or even if it matters, I'll say something in the in the comments. Um, sometimes when I reload my scripts, it'll give me an option to clean this up. Okay, so let's try and press play. And there we go. I've, I've got my, my astronaut, it's here. And then when I hit O, oh, you know what I didn't do? This is the big step. We forgot to actually put our script on something. Ha! Ah! So select your astronaut take your new script and drop it onto the inspector for your astronaut. We need to apply the script into the scene to actually get it to work. Let's try that again. Okay, so there's my astronaut. And when I hit O, every time I hit O, it's going to rescale. So we have a way that we know that this script is working. It's definitely firing. And so now the next steps are going to be, how do we get Unity, or rather Vuforia, to tell Unity when we want it to happen rather than having it be on Keypress? Because obviously, if you're doing an AR application for a phone, you're not going to be able to press a key on your phone. OK, so that is going to lead us to the next script. We want to select the image target. And the image target has a default observer event handler on it. And we are going to want to place things that happen on target found and maybe even on target lost. So the way that we're going to do this, and I am going to delete the ones that I currently have, because these normally you wouldn't have those. They're only there because I've already done some work in here for my setup. And yours is going to say tracked or extended tracked. So I'm going to drag my astronaut. Oops, not yet. Let's put that back where it was. I'm going to select the image target. I'm going to add an on target found action. And I am going to drag my astronaut into this window. And now that I have the astronaut here and it has a script on it, I can go and I can call something that is in my script of a image check. So I am now going to go back into my script and I'm going to add a new function that I'm going to be able to call from inside of Unity. So underneath void update, I am going to create a new function to call. And this one is going to be public. And so if I make it public, I'll be able to call it from Unity. And it's a public void. And I'm going to call it, 
I could call it scale or I could, I could call it arrive scale. That sounds good to me. And then I'm going to give it parentheses and then I'm going to give it our defining parentheses. And now we're going to define that our M animator that we've already called from earlier is now going to set a trigger. And that trigger is going to be the same one we've been using before, which is a trigger. Okay. So now when this function is called, it's going to do the same thing that happens when I hit the O key, which is going to set my trigger to, to a trigger. Okay. Let's make sure that we're doing our save. When I come back over here and click, it's going to reload that script. Once that script is reloaded, I can select my image target again. And I should now with astronaut as my focus, I should now be able to say AI image check and call my new function of arrive scale. Okay. So when the target is found, it is going to call this trigger, which will then allow that animation to play. Let's see if it works. There we go. Let's take it away, put it back. Doesn't work the second time. So let's stop. Let's, I'm going to take away my target. I'm going to press play. I'm going to place the target. And when it finds it, it plays the animation. That's looking pretty good. Now, some ways that we could improve this. Step number one, I think it would be preferable if I had something that allowed me to take the marker away and the astronaut disappears. And then when I place the marker down, it scales up every single time. So I'm getting a, a new scaling up happening every time. Okay, so in order to do that, what I need to do is I have to have a new event for when the target is lost. So if I go back over to my animator, one thing that I can do here is I think the most convincing way would be to have our animation play in reverse. So I can right click a scale and say copy. I can paste a new one in here and a scale. I'm going to call it a scale down for clarity. And I'm going to give it a speed of negative one. Uh, I then also am going to need a new trigger. And I'm going to call this a reverse. And I'm going to create a new transition from any state to scale down, make a transition to scale down. I'm going to select that transition again. And my condition for this one is going to be a reverse. Okay. So if that is the case, that should be fully functioning from everything that I'm seeing here. Let's go back to our scene. Let's select our image target. And so on target lost, now we want it to do something else. So we're going to have to go back to our script. And in this situation, I'm going to simply copy my existing function, paste it back in and say, arrives, I could say depart scale, but since it's uh, already listed in the A's, I'm going to say arrive scale down. And now I need to reset the trigger. So rather than saying set trigger a trigger, I'm going to say reset trigger a trigger. I'm also then let's just copy this and paste this and say, anytime I'm firing a trigger, I'm also going to need to reset a reverse in case it's already been fired. And anytime that I'm calling arrive scale down, I'm going to want it to set trigger a reverse. Okay. So we're going to say file, save all, move this off the screen. It's going to reload. 
Now there's one tricky thing here. Unity will try to underst <clears throat> understand the environment. So when the marker leaves the screen, it will try to extend tracking to the environment so that it still understands where that marker is. And that is not gonna work for our functions here because we're gonna say on target lost and we're gonna add the astronaut and make sure you're pulling the astronaut from the scene, from the hierarchy. Do not pull it from your project folder. You wanna pull this one, which has the script applied to it. So this is gonna call a image check arrival scale down. Now, if I test this right now, it will not work properly because tracked or extended tracked is on. To make this script work the way that I'm showing you, you need to set this to tracked only. Let's go ahead and hit play. I'm gonna pull the marker out of the way so that we start with no marker in the field of view of our camera. I'm gonna place the marker and when it recognizes it, it's gonna scale up. When I take it away, it's no longer tracking it. And when I put it back down, it's tracking it again. Now, another way to test this, if you're having any problems, is select your animator. And right now, I don't have anything firing. Oh, well, that's interesting. That is not Huh, something, this has normally worked for me in the past. I'm not sure why it's not showing that up, but I guess that's not a good way of testing this. Okay, so we're still in play mode, so I'm gonna unplay that. Um, and then just for clarity's sake, so again, if you run into this problem, you might have tracked or extended tracked on, and the idea here is when if Euphoria finds a marker, so it's currently found it, or it's about to find it. Well, there we go, it's found it. So it's currently being tracked. You can actually see down here, astronaut scale tracked. When I pull the marker away, it goes to extended tracked. And in this case, you can see, it thinks that the marker is just off the screen and it was still showing me the astronaut. And then when I bring the astronaut back, it's not gonna have that scale animation because it never it doesn't understand that it lost the marker. So if you run into that problem, the solution again is to turn this to tracked. Okay, so that is really how all of this works. If you wanna clean this up for final, um, you might wanna pull out this t key press uh, that was really only there to make sure that our animation was working. Uh, the other things that you can do is, um, you know, rather than having this scale up, uh, you could have it so the astronaut floats down um, from the top. Uh, another thing that you could do would be to have a, a loading animation, um, something that I, I covered previously and I can go a little bit more in depth in with a future tutorial. Uh, but the idea is if you have a user who is looking for a marker, you want them to know immediately when they have found the marker. And so if you have a loading animation and that loading animation takes too long, a user could find a marker and then move past it before your content shows up. And so you don't wanna have that happen. So in some cases you're gonna wanna include a, a loading animation. Um, yeah, so let me know if you've got any questions, but hopefully this was a useful tutorial. Um, I know that if you're trying to do this kind of stuff on your own, it can be very, very confusing. Unity's, uh, sorry, not Unity's website, but Vuforia's website has a lot of code for very many years. Uh, and so the, the code that I'm calling here works. It's currently 2023, it's March, and I'm using the 2021 version of Unity and I'm using it with the, let's go to our Vuforia settings. I'm using it with the AR camera, open Vuforia. I'm using 20.12.3 uh, and just recently Vuforia went to 20.13.3. Um, so hopefully this will work for a number of years and this was a useful tutorial. 
So let me know if you've got more requests in the comments and I'll see if I can answer any questions for you. But hopefully this gets you to create some really amazing content for Unity in augmented reality using Vuforia. Thanks for watching.